Okay, so this is going to be a uh, just a video of me talking and giving my thoughts on the first episode of Iron Fist, season one of Iron Fist. Uh, That's a new thing that I kind of want to do is uh, give my thoughts on some uh, some shows that I that I happen to watch. Uh, this originally came out in 2017. I didn't get the chance to talk about it even on my old channel, so I figured this would be a good place to start. So. Basically, the, the first episode is mainly about Danny Rand coming back to Manhattan after being gone for 15 years uh, after his plane crashed and his family died. Uh, he's believed to be dead as well, though. It wasn't Wendell Rand was, his, was Danny Rand's father, and he owned a company with Harold Meacham. Yeah, that was his partner, whatever. And Harold Meacham has two kids, uh, Joy and um, Ward. And so they were friends when they were kids, whatever. And Harold Meacham is, uh, well, he's believed to be dead. He's actually really alive uh, from cancer. So Ward and Joy are now kind of running the company, though. Um, what is it, Rand Enterprises or something like that? Uh, so he comes back. He fights some security guards and everything to get up to them. But they don't believe that it's actually him, which, you know, is, you think would be something that could be cleared up pretty quickly with DNA and things like that. Not in this show. We need to prolong it for multiple episodes. Show me a DNA test that proves you're Rand. I have no living relatives. Fingerprint test. I, I was 10 when we crashed. I never had fingerprints taken. Then you've got nothing. <gasps> so he looks like a fucking bum, and they think he's crazy, so they kick him out. Uh, only after Ward has already, like, threatened his life, which he, you know, makes good on later on <laughs> when he sends the security guards to go kill him in the middle of the street. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, Finn Jones plays Danny Rand, by the way. Uh, he's not very good, but whatever. He's not that bad yet. Uh, Colleen Wing, played by Jessica Henwick, she's easily uh, like a better character than most of the other characters in this. But in this, they just kind of like have a chance meeting. Pretty much, she goes to give him money because she thinks he's a home. She thinks he's homeless, and he wants to help out with her dojo because he needs a job. But she won't let him, and it's to the point where she's like, it's weird because she's threatening him, but then she also gives him shoes there's other run-ins that he has with joy and um and ward uh, joy is played by jessica Strupp and uh ward's played by tom pelfrey uh you get a, a flashback when he breaks into joy's place or whatever sneaks into it um and the i will say the ward and joy the actor and actress they're great like they're, they're probably two of the best actors in this uh, but their younger versions, uh, not so much. Hey everyone, we're home. We're up here. Oh, here comes mommy and daddy to protect you and give you lots of hugs and kisses and tell you what a sweet little boy you are. It's disgusting. Or So, uh, there's a part where he flips over a car and things like that. Uh, and Joy is kind of taken aback by him. Joy is a weird one because one minute she's kind of on his side and she kind of believes that it actually is him. And then the next minute, uh, she doesn't. Like, she'll be in front of him and Ward will be there or whatever. And she'll be like, get away from me or I'm going to do this, 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 and that. I'm going to, you know, my driver's on the way here and I'm going to get you that. And then the minute he goes away, she's like, you know what? He looks like Danny. And she does this multiple times in the show. It's absolutely ridiculous. She is so fickle. I mean, it goes to the point where she's, she still admits that it looks like him, and he kind of gives certain information, and then she still drugs him and puts him in a, in a, in like a psych ward. And it's like, wow. I mean, maybe he should be in a psych ward because that's a, another thing. This this character is written pretty badly anyway. But when he talks, he he does this whole he has this whole Zen thing where he talks really low like this. I would never hurt you, Joy. Um, but then he has these weird outbursts of anger where he's, you know. Uh, almost drives Ward's car off the cliff, off of a, a parking garage, I said cliff, off a parking garage. When you're a 10 year old boy and you watch your mother die, and you know you and your father are next, it feels like this. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Stop this. And also the dialogue's not the best. He's like, you used to kick me in the balls all the time. Yeah, it's not good. The main character is probably the worst part of this, at least this first episode. There's also this other, you know, uh, storyline with, uh, what's it called? Uh, Harold Meacham, um, played by David Wenham. And he's actually not really dead. He's hiding away somewhere. It, it's not revealed yet in this episode why. 
and I can't remember what the reason was. Some other thing, he d didn't really die, or he died and came back to life or something like that. Um, but he's like running the company, I guess, behind the scenes. And I got it. I have to admit, even though I didn't like these scenes originally watching the show, from what I remember, I actually do kind of like their back and forth, where Ward is like, like, completely done with it all, and is just like fed up already, like right from the beginning, of having to constantly like listen to his dad as his dad's berating him and stuff. As far as like the martial arts and stuff like that, there's a little bit here. I guess it's fine here because it's just little little you know kind of goofy like making people fall into things or kicking people into things it's fine you don't actually get to see any of the actual iron fist stuff or him using his fist in this this episode uh, he has an ipod apparently that ipod i mean there's stuff like that that just doesn't make sense this is apparently his ipod still works after 15 years because it's the same one from the plane crash a plane crash that you should get used to because it's in this episode like three or four times uh, <laughs> and I, I, it's gonna repeat at least a few more times from what I remember. Uh, it's a ridiculous car, uh, ridiculous plane crash. I'll talk about that in a second. But I mean, he's been gone for 15 years. Technology has advanced in in so many ways, uh, social media and all this other stuff. And as far as you know, him getting used to it, all it is is just that there's a homeless man, that, which is clearly a plot device, where he just comes up to him and he's like. Hey, you want to look up anybody? You want to look up your family? To... <laughs> and then that guy dies later on, and I hadn't even remembered that guy's name if he had one. There's this question of, well, what does Danny Rand want? And that was the weirdest thing for me because I was like, but he wants to come back home. He wants to be part of you guys' life again. You guys were like family to him. You're the only family he has left. I mean, the idea that they would be like, let's say he is Danny Rand. What does he want? He also, that's probably the main reason why Ward doesn't want him around, even after he clearly is starting to show some signs that this might be real, uh, is that he would own 51% of the company <laughs> as uh, uh, Wendell Rand's heir. <laughs> but <laughs> whatever, dude. Yeah, that plane crash was ridiculous. I mean, uh, when they were kids, Danny Rand you know, was called a mama's boy or something like that, but for the mom to like fall out of her seat and then go to caress his face as she definitely knows that the plane is going down and for her to just comically just get tossed out of that bitch. <laughs> I was like, I mean, you could have sat next to him and strapped in if you really wanted to be by your son during that moment. It's almost like she just gave up her life and was like, I just want to touch his cheek one last time. <laughs> this show, man, this show. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. This, this episode wasn't even that bad. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg with the, the nonsense in the show. I'm just gonna keep it simple. I'm not gonna really give it a rating or anything like that. I'm just gonna say whether it's good or good or okay or bad based on my opinion. And I think the episode was fine. Right, it has some issues, some writing issues. Uh, Danny Rand's character is probably the worst written part of it. And also the acting is not that great from Finn Jones. But other than that, like the other characters are kind of interesting. You kind of want to see where it might go. You haven't got to the superhero element of it. Uh, the, the idea that she drugged him and put him in that institution is really stupid but you still want to kind of see where that goes and when the, where, when the superhero element's really going to kick in so I'll say this first episode is fine I guess it's probably because I'm grading on a curve because I know what's coming but whatever that is the first episode of Iron Fist Marvel's Iron Fist on Netflix and yeah that's it um, like subscribe all that other stuff and we're done